greatest Telecaster playing in your life, country. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yeah! Hello friends, it's your buddy Keith and I'm here live at Essex Recording Studios just outside London in South End on Sea, England. And today, I am treating you to a 1968 Fender Telecaster. This is a maple cap model, so no skunk stripe on the back, separate maple fretboard. These are very, very rare, highly sought after, and this is not a reissue, not a new custom shop model, this is an original 60s Fender Telecaster. So you're gonna know exactly what one of these sounds like because we're gonna pass this guitar over to my friend James who has played guitar for everyone. Uh, Lily Allen, he's going on tour with Belinda Carlisle soon. Uh, Thunder, ABC, he's played with everyone, guys. You gotta check him out, he's phenomenal. Uh, and if you wanna buy this guitar, it is for sale. So we'll have a link to it in the description and in the comments. Now it's time to get this thing plugged in so you can hear it. All right, this is the 68 Thunder Telecaster. Enjoy, guys. Hey guys, what's up? It's your buddy Keith, and we are here in the control room at Essex Recording Studios with Mr. James Nisbet. Hello, James, welcome. Thank you, thank you for the invite. It's a fantastic place, and all these lovely, all these lovely guitars. Thank you oh, very oh, much, nice. yes. And we've also got, uh, hanging out, watching us, is Maya and Luca. All right, guys, well, Holding your hands over here. This is a 1968 Fender Telecaster with the maple cap neck. So it's got an independent uh, maple fretboard. And these clean tones are sounding great, man. This is a lovely, great, great neck on it. And it's very, very even, very clear Telecaster. It's a very, very nice Telecaster. Very articulate. You can play all your fancy chords. It's very uh, articulate, you know, the notes yeah. really come through. It's great, actually.
Yeah. I see why they pay you the big bucks, man. <laughs> wow, that sounds killer. So uh, you play usually a, a 70s Strat is your go-to, uh, right? That's my current uh, touring guitar. I mean, a lot of times when you've got to do weekenders or flybys or uh, um, if you can only take one guitar, that's what I take. That's been quite heavily, that's been heavily um, custom that much. It's mainly the pickups and stuff. I've put some couple of bare knuckle 63s at the front and it's got a 59 uh, mini humbucker of Seymour Duncan, which, is, which sounds great actually. But it's quite a heavy, big chunk of wood, so it's pretty full. So you can get the combination, obviously, with the... Uh, I mean, I, the other guitars uh, I really like is my um, Les Paul. So, but obviously, they don't travel so well unless you've got proper flight cases, which I found out in Australia and Perth once when I opened the case and the headstock had been... Oh, of course. ...cracked off. Which it's is, not an authentic Gibson if the headstock doesn't crack. No, I had the Gibson smile, that's for sure. Oh, so, man. Um, so that was a bit of a drip at this point. It's, it's, I've got to say, Fender's a little bit more... Uh, not, not quite so delicate on the road. But I do like my uh, Les Paul, but the uh, the, the 70s, um, uh, 70s Stratocaster, sorry, is pretty much, if you want, if you, if you need a guitar, just do one thing to get, it'll get you through pretty much anything, that'll do it for you. Wow, man. And what stands out on these vintage ones, like playing a 60s Telecaster, not everyone can just walk into their local guitar shop and play a 68 Fender Tele. What's different about this versus a 2022 Telecaster? You you go get off the wall in your local guitar shop. It's definitely got... The wood has sort of lived a bit. I, I know it sounds corny and everything like that, but this is a really... No, this is a 68, whatever it is. And it's clear as a bell all the way up. And it's been... Guitars need to age a little bit. I mean, obviously, the, the, the ones that you get, the new sort of like um, vintage ones or uh, relics, sorry, there are some very good ones, but in general, I've played a couple of, I mean, my favorite is it would be a 63 Strat, if I could get one slab board. But um, at the moment, that's not quite on the cards, um, the current prices. But I remember playing that once, and it just felt, it just feels different. And I actually played, a, uh, I think it was Billy Gibbons, 52 Telecaster. Okay. And that really was, uh, had some, definitely had some mojo about it, and it really just, um, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just been played in nicely. It's funny that you mentioned it, pure luck. I think we just put a set of his strings on this guitar. Okay. So that might be that might be part of the mojo vibe you've got going on here. What's this? Uh... Anyway, uh, this, 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 this particular one, now we're going for a very clean, there's no yes, effects. Just using the amp synth here. And just a little, maybe a hint of reverb on there, and it really it has a lot of. Without getting too much into Nigel Tufnell's to say in the territory here, but it does. It really has. Clear, not too heavy on the bottom or, or top, not too bright, not too shrill. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, I'd mentioned to Keith earlier about um, this guitar player. If you want to hear the greatest Telecaster playing in your life, there's a guy called Danny Gatton. And he recorded an album called 88 Elmira Street. If you want to know how to play Telecaster, listen to that album because that is the greatest, I think one of the greatest guitar albums ever. It was criminally underrated at the time, but it's the Telecaster playing. It's all on the Telecaster. I think it was a 53 Telecaster he had. Again, very similar to this, I think. Um, in fact, what's the, yeah, Maple. Well, he, he, he had a couple of his own custom pickups on there, but his fingers were just unbelievable. All right, so, everyone, go check him out. So check out Danny. And where can people check you out? Well, we're going to America uh, in a couple of weeks with Belinda Carlisle, and we're going to do a, uh, um, a West Coast tour, starting in California. And we're doing uh, going mainly West Coast, but we're ending up in uh, I think Austin. We finish um, in mid-November. We'll do about a month over there, five weeks. And then the next proper tour is with her, with Belinda, will be the UK, end of January. And awesome. We'll go up, up and down the country. I think we're around the corner in South End as well. And uh, that will be all through the month of January through to beginning of March, I believe. And um, yeah, so that's uh, 
but that keep me busy for the next few months as well as other kind of little bands I do is kind of fully dreaming and kind of screaming bands we've got some dates over between Christmas and New Year's I mean between November and Christmas and the year um, so yeah between that those are two, two those are the main things that keep me keep me occupied for the next few weeks a few months sorry awesome and you're on Instagram right everyone can find you at James no, there's, there's, there's some some git stole my actual name <laughs> I stole oh, your no. name so it's Nisba 8808 and that's it yeah go, go and 8808 like a Neve 8808 there you go 8808 there you go Nisbet 8808 and um, I've, I've got, I put stuff up on there it's a bit of guitar things and the bands and some of the dates. So yes, if you want to get in contact, get me on that. And um, all right. I just want to say thank you to everyone. For, for, we had a, for a very nice. We're just going to come down for like half an hour. Check out the studio. Been here all afternoon, having a great time. <laughs> the studio is fantastic. You should definitely check it out. Oh, it's, thanks, it's thanks a lot, man. No, we really appreciate it. And it's uh, it's so such a privilege and an honor to have such an amazing player come in and put some of our guitars through his paces. Yeah, he's got a lot of beautiful guitars. <laughs> Okay. All right. We'll catch you all later.